Who's six years old here? Yeah. <laughs> um, when I was six years the old, <laughs> uh, um, my mom, I think she brought me out and I went the first week of school maybe and then went back in the mountains. And, uh, the dad had a hunter, Tommy Diamond was his name. Don't ask me where from. <clears throat> but he wanted to go hunting and he took me with him. And if you don't know the country, you know. Anyway, we went to Bitch Lake, which was nine, ten miles from the ranch, at least. And he killed a deer. And I don't remember much about the trip, except when the packer went to get the deer, this was six years old, 1938. The fire had burnt through there in 34. And he couldn't have found the deer except he could track me because I couldn't walk the logs. I had to crawl over them, you know, in the ash and the soot and everything. And he found the deer. And Tommy Diamond gave me this rifle then. It's got a little age on it. And I used to shoot ground squirrels and grouse with it. And I didn't know that you had it. <laughs> well, I tell you what, I don't have it now. You've got it. Yeah. Huh. Nope, <laughs> it's all yours. <laughs> but then I got to figure out who the hell to leave it to. <laughs> <laughs> I figured that's just your problem too. Yeah. <laughs> now there's there's one other thing that I know that he has to uh, tell a story about, and I cannot cannot tell it at all. I can only wonder. But uh, I, I think that we're going to soon have it around here and, and uh, this is going to answer a lot of questions that I've had over the years now in 1909 that's been a few years ago our father received this book of poetry and uh, once in a while we bring it out I've had it redone in a bookshop rebound yeah, it used to be pretty ragged. Yeah, but uh, I've noticed that at one point in time that uh, Jim gets a little emotional when he hears this. Yeah. <laughs> and so, you know, I think maybe that I ought to ask Gail to read this. You don't think so? Marika? Marika is the next one out there. Yeah. Gail lost her glasses this morning. <laughs> okay. Sonny's going to read it. Sonny's going to read it. Yeah, Sonny's a good one. Right there. Maybe not. I thought this would be easier. The Village Blacksmith. Under a spreading chestnut tree, the village smithy stands. The smith, a mighty man, is he, with large and sinewy hands and the muscles of his brawny arms as are strong as iron bands. The hair is crisp and black and long, his face is like the tan. His brow is wet with honest sweat, he earns whate'er he can, and looks the whole world in the face, he owes not any man. Week in, week out, from mortal night, you can hear his bellows blow. You can hear him swing his heavy sledge with measured beat and slow. Like a sexton ringing the village bell when evening sun is low, the children coming home from school look in the open door. They love to see the flaming forge and hear the bellows roar and each the burning sparks that fly like chafe from a thrashing floor. He goes on Sunday to the church and sits among his boys and hears the parson pray and preach and hears his daughter's voice. Singing in the village choir and it makes his heart rejoice. It sounds to him like his mother's voice, singing in paradise. He, <clears throat> he, he needs must think of her once more, how in the grave she lies. And with his hand, rough hand, he swipes a tear of, of his eyes. Toiling, rejoice, in sorrowing, onward through life he goes. Each morning are some task begin, each evening sees it done. Something is attempted, something's done has earned its night repose. Thanks, thanks to thee, my worthy friend, for the lessons thou hast taught. I thus, thus at the flaming forge of life, our fortunes must be wrought. Thus on the ground, anvil shaped, 
Thus on its sounding anvil shaped each burning deed and thought. Henry Wadsworth Longfellow. Now the poem is a mighty good poem, but it brings a lot of emotion. How come? Mm -hmm. Was there a point in time when you read this poem? Was there a point in time when that brought back, brought back memories of someone special? You know, I told you I took the four wheel and drove up to the upper place yesterday. I don't know if I'm going to do that again. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I don't know why that poem does it, <laughs> but it does. <laughs> you know, you both of us. That, you read that to us from the time we were little. Yeah, so, so I think I said, so. sure, I'll read it. I had no idea it was that bad. <laughs> <laughs> well. But I'll, now, if you want some poetry, Sonny's got a book over here. It's got two or three poems in it that somebody else could read. <laughs> and they're funny, <laughs> sort of. <laughs> well, I'll, I'll leave you with one last little short one. It's called Grumbling Jim. Is that appropriate now? I don't know if it is or not. He sat at dinner table with a discontented frown. The potatoes and the steaks were underdone. The bread was baked too round. The pie too sour, the pudding too sweet, and the toast or roast, it, mu it was much too fat. The soup so greasy too and salt Sure, it was hardly fit for the cat. I wish you could eat the bread and pies I've seen my mother make. There's something like, eh, it would do you good just to look at a loaf of her cake. Said the smiling wife, I'll improve with age. Just now I'm just a beginner. But your mother has come to visit, and today she cooks the dinner. <laughs> <laughs> well, I know that, uh, that you folks had, had listened to this as youngsters, um, and I had to complete the reading of this, at a, and I think Marvin's um, memorial. Yeah. Uh, because Jim couldn't do that. Yep. And so I knew that there was a lot of emotion behind that. And that's uh, something that, uh, well, it's important to us all. Share that emotion and have those feelings and make sure that none of us are too small. Happy birthday. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> somewhat honored if not surprised that so many damn people showed up <laughs> hey we promised them food <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> if somebody feels like reading <clears throat> a poem that's kind of funny <clears throat> I can tell you which one in that book that Sonny's got over here <laughs> we'll have to have that done <laughs>